Yo, what's good, everybody? Welcome to the Hefe Sports Podcast. It's your boy, Jeff Hefe Hopkins, coming to you live. It's Friday. It's a good day. And here with me is Clemson offensive lineman Matthew Bockhorse. Bach, what's good, bro? My God, Jeff, I appreciate you having me, man. You know, I've, I've been waiting for that invite. You know, I've been waiting, <laughs> but to, the, the day has finally come, my friend. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. We're here. Bro, how have things been at Clemson? You know, man, it's been a crazy year for everybody. Uh, you know, we just we just been grinding all summer, trying to get ready, you know, working through the unknowns. But right now, the way it sits, it seems like we're, we're getting ready to go for the season. So, you know, we're, we've got a pretty laser focus and excited to get the games rolling. That's great, man. That's great. I'm excited to watch you guys get out there again. Bro, Clemson, you guys came up a little bit short last year, but I know Coach Sweeney's got in your ears and you guys are going to be ready for this year. Yeah, man, you know, it's uh, <clears throat> having success uh, really consistently, you know, at that level is uh, something to strive for and you're never going to be perfect. But uh, we, we did come up short last year to a, to a really talented and, and explosive LSU team. But, you know, each year it starts over and there's a new opportunity every year. And, and uh, this year, the person that wins it all this year is certainly going to have earned that, you know, with all the things that have gone on. So we're really we're ready for the challenge. And like I said, excited to get things rolling. Yeah, man. I'm excited to watch you guys. You guys got T. Lawrence, Trevor Lawrence coming back. The best running back, best quarterback duo in the nation, Travis Etienne. And you get to block for every one of them. How do you feel about that? <laughs> <laughs> Man, I'll tell you what, it is, uh, it's amazing, really, in practice. I think sometimes I just sit there and think about uh, the type of guys I'm surrounded with. And, uh, you know, obviously those two are the, the focal point on the team, and rightfully so. I mean, those guys are unbelievable to watch. But um, <clears throat> even outside of them, the guys I'm playing with on the O-line and, and the, def the guys we have on defense, I mean, uh, the talent at, at Clemson and, um, you know, even a lot of the other schools in, uh, in college football at that level, it's just incredible. And, uh, you know, you see these guys work day in and day out and, and you know, the type of success they're going to have at the next level. So I, I, I feel really lucky to be surrounded by those dudes and just try to take in as much as I can. Right. Right. And honestly, like, I know we're good friends and all, but like just speaking unbiasedly, like the offensive linemen, they are the true people that make the way for everybody. And so you guys are the unsung heroes, and I don't want you guys to go unforgotten for that. Well, hey, man, I appreciate it. You know, it's one of those things, you know, I, I don't know when I – I think I made a decision probably when I was like a freshman in high school that like I was just going to be an O-lineman. And it's, uh, you know, you're not, you're not thanked for much. You get blamed for a lot. But in the end of the day, you know, that's exactly how I like it. And, uh, you know, we, we do the dirty work. And, uh, you know, that's just the type of dudes that we are. It's all about communication and teamwork. So, uh, you know, we, we know we play a big part in the team. And if everyone else gets the spotlight, that's fine as long as we get the W. Yep. That's right, bro. That's right. So let's go through your season a little bit. So start off versus Wake Forest, at Wake Forest. What are the intentions going into that game for you guys? Well, obviously, you know, each week is a, <clears throat> a season of itself, as Coach Swinney likes to say. So, you know, we're starting to – going to be prepping for Wake Forest over these next couple of weeks and really getting dialed in on the playbook and what we're going to take up there to run. Um, you know, it, it's the first first game of the season, so it's always exciting. It's always a unique challenge because each team has new personnel and they also have guys that are coming back. So you always got – there's a little bit of a guessing game uh, involved in week one. I know that Wake Forest, they, they've got some D linemen coming back, which is going to be a strength of their defense. So – it's going to be a real challenge. We have uh, four new starters on the offensive line this year, including myself. So, uh, you know, we're going to be tested early, which is what you want. And, um, you know, it's a conference game. That's the thing about this this year. You know, there's uh, there, there ain't any mulligans. So uh, each week matters, and, and each week you're playing for the, the opportunity to play in the championship game in Charlotte. So, uh, you know, I'm excited. Like I said, it's uh, been a long time coming, long off season, and let's get it. Yeah, man. I'm excited for you, bro. Finally getting that starting spot. I know how hard you work for this. And it kind of, you kind of got dealt a bad hand where you had upperclassmen in front of you playing ahead of you. But now is your time, man. And I cannot wait to see you go crazy this year because it's going to happen. Yeah, facts, man. You know, I, you and I, man, ever since high school, knowing each other. And, and obviously, we've both been through a lot, uh, you know, with injuries mostly. But, uh, you know, I got to Clemson and, you know, I was basically behind at left guard. Uh, the first guy, Taylor Hearn, he went and played for the Panthers. And then the guy I've been behind the past two years, John Simpson, fourth round of the Raiders. So, you know, sometimes that's the way it, the way it is. You get dealt those cards. But 
in the end, you just got to control what you can control, get better every day. And now, you know, the silver lining of it all is that when it is my time to start this year, I know what I'm about to do. So, oh, you hear that? <laughs> hey, let's go. I, hey, for those who can't see me, I got goosebumps right now. This man, <laughs> woo! Oh, my so, goodness. Hey, man, it's one of those things. Yeah, it, it's a process, but, you know, I, I, I have a lot of confidence from that process. So, I'm excited. Yep, yep. So, after, after Wake Forest, you guys got the Citadel, then Virginia. And then to cap it off, you guys got a home game versus the U. And this is going to be your first time playing the U. And, you know, they're a storied franchise and everything. So what do you feel about playing with them? Yeah, so actually Virginia and the U, uh, because of the schedule changes this year, going all conference, they did away with the divisions. So Virginia and the U would be two schools that we traditionally would not play because they're in the other divisions. So, um, you know, obviously that's a great opportunity. And the U, you know, like you said, it's, it's a story program. So uh, it's just exciting to think about to get the opportunity to play a school like that and just, you know, change the scenery, a different, a different school and uh, new challenges. So obviously schools like that got, have a great talent. And, uh, you know, <laughs> anytime you get a play on the home turf, uh, it's something special. So, uh, you know, we'll t- take advantage of that. You know, fans or no fans or however many there are, you know, we just got to play the game. Right, right. So let's talk about that. So what is Clemson University's plan for fans in the fall? So they actually just released this week. Um, I'm not sure. I think it's like 23%, uh, roughly 19,000, give or take, fans. And, uh, you know, there's a mix of player families, students, and uh, boosters that are all kind of mixed in there. So, you know, it's it's a challenge. It's, it's different. Obviously, you know, being at a school like Clemson, we're, we're lucky to, enough to have a, an awesome game day atmosphere every week. And, uh, you know, our fans are ready to go all the time. And they're, they're some of the most passionate fans in the country, which is awesome. And I think, you know, if nothing else, this year will teach us how lucky we are to have that every week. So, uh, you know, even though it is a reduced capacity, I know that the people that are there are going to be excited to be there. And, uh, you know, it might not be as hard for opposing offenses, but that's even more so to bring it on the field and not have to worry about the external factors. You know what I mean? Yep. Yeah, I do. And you're not lying when you say you got the most pass. You got some of the most passionate fans in the country. Like I go to Ohio State, and we we're pretty rowdy up here. But for a ga- I went to a game last year, and we were they were playing Wofford. Clemson was playing Wofford, and like you know, Wofford's like I love I'm, I love my boy Zach, but Wofford is they're not Clemson's level, and so you show up to the game, and like I'm expecting like okay, like. It's going to be a good atmosphere. Like, it's Clemson, of course, like number one team in the nation. Cool, cool. But then the, the field is packed. <laughs> there are no empty seats for a game versus Wofford. And they were wearing their military appreciation purple uniform. So it was already special. So, like, I'm already just sitting in my seat like, okay, like, just trying to take it everything in, just trying to take it all in. Like, wow, this place is crazy. And then you see – the what is it the most exciting 25 seconds in college football yeah most exciting 25 seconds of college football the, yeah the running down the hill yeah you see that i look over to my right and i see these balloons flying in the air i see the the fight song which i love i love that fight song it's one of the, the most catchy fight songs i think and you see you hear all this stuff you see all these players running down the hill these players are like jumping like 100 feet in the air it's just crazy <laughs> man like Clemson, the atmosphere at Memorial Stadium, you need to go see that. That is one of the premier locations in college football. So, Matt, it is – I, bro, it's amazing. Like, yeah, man, <laughs> I, I, I tell you what, I, I kind of got a feel for that as a recruit. You know, I was committed pretty early. So, by my senior season, you know, I was able to go to most of the home games, you know, as a commit. And, and just seeing the passion and – and, you know, how much pride people take in, in the Paul here at Clemson is, is definitely special. And, you know, a big term they have here at Clemson is Clemson family. And, uh, you know, we don't take that lightly. And it's not just a slogan. People try to live it out every day, even for the opposing team's fans. And, you know, I, I haven't necessarily had as, as much experience in the stands. But from what I can hear, you know, Clemson fans are always attempting to be as gracious as they can to, to visiting fans, which I think is what it's all about. You know, I think that uh, I spoke on it briefly to the media last season about how, you know, for most of the players in college football, there's a ton of mutual respect because, uh, you know, all y'all are going through the same grind generally. Right. Uh, the, the year-round workouts, the early mornings, the late nights, the weekends. So there's a lot of mutual respect. And sometimes some of that respect gets a little lost between some, some fans, you know, rivalry 
games and stuff like that. And so I always think it's important to, to never lose sight of the fact that it's just a game and it's competitive and there's a lot riding on it. But at the end of the day, you know, it's just the something that we all love. It's something that people can rally around and, and it's a very unifying sport. So, uh, you know, I, I always, um, you know, take pride in the fact that Clemson does it right. It seems like. Yeah. Yeah. And from my experience, they do do it right. You know, I was welcomed down there by your family. Love the Bach horse. Love the Bach horse. I was welcomed down there. Had a great time at a tailgate. Went to the game. It was great. It was great times. Yeah, for sure. For sure. So let's get back to the season. So after Miami, you guys got on the road at Georgia Tech, at home versus Syracuse, at home versus Boston College. Then you guys got a big one, week eight versus Notre Dame in South Bend. And I know – just from growing up in high school, you, Notre Dame used to be your team. So is there going to be a little added, added little energy for that game? Yeah. So, you know, it's, it, it's no secret. I mean, when I was in high school, I was a big time Notre Dame fan. Uh, you know, I was born in Indianapolis, Catholic boy, you know, it just kind of seemed like destiny uh, that I wear that, that gold helmet one day, but it didn't work out that way. And uh, you know, I, first off, I will be the first to say that I would not change how any of it happened. And, and I'm, I'm extremely grateful to be in the position that I'm in. But, you know, I'm excited to get back there. And, you know, if anything, just prove, you know, that I belong. And, uh, you know, you, don't, you can never let the emotions take over the game because that can start to lead to mistakes. But, you know, sometimes a little added emotion is good and it allows you to, to play to a higher level. So I'm excited. I really hope it's not cold <laughs> because <laughs> – Oh, I, I, Matt, you're an Ohio boy. Don't tell uh, me you got soft on me. I hate the cold. I hate playing in the cold, but <laughs> nah, man. I mean, Notre Dame is one of, you know, obviously it didn't work out me going there, but you know, there's no arguing that Notre Dame is one of the most historic football programs in the entire country, arguably, you know, and uh, so just the tradition that surrounds the campus and the football program there is something that, you know, it's very special and to have the opportunity to play in that stadium in front of that crowd um, is something that I'll cherish for a long time. Oh yeah. And I can't wait to see that. Just knowing you, like, I'm going to keep going back to it. Knowing you, like, yeah. you're going to be ready for that game. And so well, I'm, 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 I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to be tuning in for that one. But the rest of your season, after Notre Dame, you guys got on the road versus Florida State. <laughs> <laughs> you guys got at home versus Pittsburgh and on the road versus Virginia Tech. So just looking through all this schedule, like, I think you guys can compete and win in every single game that you play. Now, I'm not going to ask you what you think about it, but is this a championship year or bust for you guys? You know, I think uh, at, at a school like Clemson, uh, you know, we have individual goals throughout the season, but we all know what the end goal is. And, you know, as much as we have our sights on, on you know, being at the top of the mountain in college football, you can't overlook the the, the daily grind, the – games every week you know you can't win 12 until you win one and two and three so you can't overlook things I mean you know the one of those names you mentioned there that pops up in my head is Pittsburgh you know last time Pittsburgh came to, to Death Valley uh, they they beat the Tigers and uh, a lot of people might not remember that but that was the uh, 2016 national championship year with Deshaun Watson and uh, you know so anything can happen I think that uh, you people need to be careful um, on overlooking teams, you know, obviously, you know, you get to this time of the year, the summer, and it's talking season, and, and everybody, you know, thinks that certain games are gimmies and, and things like that, but, you know, those those teams have 85 scholarships, too, and they've got some pretty good players, too, so you can never overlook that, and each team deserves respect, and, you know, throughout the years, like, for example, last year, we had a close one with North Carolina, and that's a very legit team, and so, you know, being that we've had the success that we've had over the past five years, there is some added pressure to, to be perfect. But, you know, if we can just control the process every week and come back with a renewed focus, no matter if we are playing the Citadel or Notre Dame, it shouldn't matter what the opponent is. You need to play to the same standard every week. So, uh, you know, it's a grind. It's, it's a long season. I, you know, I think the official season is one game shorter regular season this year, but uh, you know, like I said, there's a lot of other added challenges that are presented to us this year. So, uh, you know, the people that, that come out on top, the team that does is uh, certainly going to be worthy. Right. I agree. You raised a good point, too. Like, I wasn't thinking about it where 
you guys are Clemson. You guys got the target on your back. Every single team is going to bring their best to right. try to dethrone you guys. Yeah, it's, uh, you know, that's just the nature of the beast. I think that, you know, to, to have that kind of, you know, <laughs> I mean, to have that target is somewhat of a compliment because you've earned it. You know, you're, each week is everybody else's, you know, that's the game. And, you know, which, which is a great challenge for us because, you know, we know we're getting everybody's best and I wouldn't want to have it any other way. And, uh, you know, if you can compete week in and week out against every team gunning for you, you know you're going to be prepared. And uh, it, it, it's definitely challenging at times. And, and that's what, you know, I go back to people will act like certain games are gimmies or, you know, a given that Clemson should win. But, you know, there, there is a human factor in all of this. And, you know, players have to execute plays and, and players got to play the game. And, and uh, you know, a game can look like it's won on paper, but it's played on the field. Right. So, uh, you know, there, there's, there's a lot more, you know, stranger things have happened in college football, you know, however long ago it was when uh, I believe it was App State beat Michigan, uh, mm -hmm. you know. And so, you know, you can't – you cannot overlook anybody. You know, it's Division One football. Yeah, yeah, that's true. So, kind of switching topics right now. So, the season starts in a matter of days, really. How's everybody doing on your team? Is everybody healthy? Yeah, you know, uh, we're healthy. I think, um, you know, obviously a big concern, rightfully so, this year has been the COVID stuff. and. And, uh, you know, it was, it was um, you know, pretty public earlier this summer that, you know, we had some positives on the team and whatnot. But, you know, after that initial wave, I think we've really done a great job in following protocols. And, you know, they're strict protocols for sure, but they're, they're in place for a reason. And, you know, it takes, it takes the entire group, the entire, um, you know, staff and team and every, everybody that is in the facility every day to do their own part to make sure that we can control it and, and not have an outbreak. So, uh, you know, on that front, we've do, been doing well. Um, you know, sports injuries wise, uh, I think we're really healthy. I think, uh, you know, obviously Justin Ross, that news earlier in the off season was was tough because I mean, what a tremendous player he is. I, I, I mean, as a freshman receiver, uh, just absolutely crushed college football, and you know, topped it off with an amazing game against Alabama. So, you know, he's a, he's a really talented guy, and I'm sure he'll bounce back, but. You know, other than that, I think we're in a good spot. I think, uh, you know, came out of camp. Everybody's got some dings here and there, but, but you know, that's football. So, as far as major injuries, we're on the right track. Yeah, that's good. That's good. That's exactly what you need going into a season. But I just hated to see that Justin Ross injury because, like you said, like, he was one of the premier targets in college football. Now, he had, uh, what was it, uh, spine congenital fusion, something like that? So I don't know the exact term. Uh, it's something uh, to, to do with his neck. Uh, you know, there was concerns about stingers in the spring, and then they did some investigation, and it turned out to be a little bit more prominent of an issue. You know, it's uh, it's it's unfortunate. You know, any injury like that is just tough. And uh, you know, as we were talking earlier, he he's he's fine. I mean, he he's running around looking good. He looks great as ever. He's a, I mean, he's a freak athlete. He's huge. I mean. That dude is Six crazy. Four, but yeah, I mean, anything. yeah, so he, he's an unbelievable player, and, you know, he's moving really well, which is awesome to see. You always want guys to be healthy, but he just can't play football. And I know that's got to be frustrating for him. Uh, I, you know, if I was in that position, I'd be pretty frustrated too. But, you know, you just got to trust the process, and, and, and I'm sure that he, he's going to get back and be better than ever next season. Yeah, man. And if anybody can speak on road to recovery, it's us two. <laughs> we Facts. know what it takes but yeah, yeah prayers out to justin man hopefully he gets yeah. better but man sure. so we're let's talk about let's talk about our past a little bit man so yeah man let's get into it uh, bro we go way back <laughs> that, the, the ac the acl crew you know what i mean you know what it is bro you know what it is yeah uh where was it um shoot uh, what was that what was that rehab place uh, I don't. Was it like Mercy? No, it was the Jewish Hospital or something. Uh, ah, man, I don't know. We, bro, we I don't grind. know either. We but, had we had to we had to grind up in that John all the time. Bro. Oh my goodness, bro! We were like, I remember every single day, like Nikki, Nikki, the therapist there would be there, and like I would just be like, man, I don't want to go to this. But like once I saw you there, I'm like, all right, like let's let's get it. Yeah, like, no, we we were, we were on that. Stuff. We we were in it together. You know, we were, we were in it for the long run, man. That's senior year. Yeah, go back. But man, it's still crazy. Like 
we didn't get to play at all senior year and they still yeah. won state like yeah so for those who don't know my guy jeff uh tore his acl on the second second game of junior year i did yes uh, against against Colerain. and then uh fast forward about a year i tore my acl at the opening in oregon uh over the summer in july and then uh jeff tore the same acl in uh in training camp yep and uh so we you know <laughs> Man, you know, we, that was tough. It was a, it was a tough year. It was, uh, man, ups and downs. I just remember, you know, it, I had a really hard time with it just cause, you know, it was supposed to be the year, you know, it was like finally seniors, finally in the spotlight, you know, everything you've worked for and it just gets taken from you like in, in, the, in a moment. And, uh, you know, we, the team, we had a rocky start, you know, we, uh, we did not do well, but you know, the, the way that team finished and, and rallied around each other and there was numerous more injuries besides our two you know obviously two significant players on the team but ended up winning state and uh you know that's uh, a story that to really understand the magnitude of it you had to you had to live it because really? it is you know I try to explain it to people and I'm like you guys just don't understand man, man like this bro, this fast. was the <laughs> this was I just remember man we were four and five going to the 10th game four and five and then Every single game in the playoffs, we came from behind. And we had two overtime games, and the state championship was double overtime. <laughs> like, like the fact that we won those games is – it's I still, like, I can't – it's, it's hard to fathom. Yeah, it's, it's unbelievable. unbelievable. But, Matt, just thinking back to that year, I don't think I would be the man I am today without going through that rough period because – I can, I can speak on it and I'm not going to speak on you, but just from my standpoint, like that was the lowest of the low for me. Like nothing was, nobody was there for me. Like I'm not, I'm not saying nobody was there for me. It's just like you're at, when you're at your lowest, like you're by yourself. And the only way up is by fighting and climbing and getting to that point. And so that was really the year that I learned like, all right, you got to go and get yours. You have to step outside you know, wipe the tears off and go live your life. And so that was really what that year taught me. That was, yeah, that was something. For sure. I think that, you know, for me, just looking, keeping it real, like I had never had any adversity ever before that, like ever. I always came in, you know, I came into St. X, was athletically gifted. I was smart. I never had struggled in school. Like, you know, I had always been the best and, and everything I just, you know, came good at. And, uh, you know, that season, I felt like, you know, to be honest, like, like you said, like, you just feel lonely. Like, I felt like I'd put in all this work to be, you know, a leader on the team. And then it just, you know, stripped. And it's like, you almost just feel forgotten. And, uh, and dude, that's, that's tough. I think, you know, I've been through some tough times in college, too. You know, like I said, just having to wait out my turn to play. But I still would put that senior year as, as you know, even higher than that on just like, you know, helping me find who I am. And, and just all the things that went on and, and, you know, like you said, at the end of the day, when you're down in the dumps and life's kicking you when you're down, there is one person that you can count on to get out of that. And that's yourself. Mm -hmm. And, and it sucks. I remember I would go to rehab and then I would go lift after rehab or I'd go to practice and I'd go lift after practice and it's long nights and lonely and I'm doing different lifts than everybody else. And I'm grinding on my own because, because you and me, you know, we were both, we had our sights on the next level and, you know, just because we tore our ACLs didn't mean that everything else stopped. You know, we still had to grind. We still had to get prepared and, you know, to be able to just do that day in and day out for months, for months, Mm -hmm. is uh you know it, it just really makes you grow up like you said you wouldn't be where you are today without that and you know I think that everything happens for a reason it sounds cliche but it, it's true and you know from from my experiences it really is true and and you just you you grow through it and you know as coach Swinney says it all the time life either grinds you up or shines you up it's all what you're made of Ooh, I and, like uh, that. <laughs> and uh say that again life will either grind you up or shine you up. It, it's all about what you're made of. Mm. And uh, so, you know, I think that year for, for both of us is, you know, it was just a, a turning point. And obviously, you know, I think we both overcame it. And 
Um, but yeah, you know, <laughs> when you're 18, you think you're grown, but you ain't grown. And, <laughs> not, uh, <laughs> hey, you're not grown and, until you go through that first, nah, that nah. freshman year camp. That's when you, nah. <laughs> that's when you start to grow up. <laughs> yeah. And so you sit there on your locker, like I could have been a normal student. <laughs> but, no. So, but that man, I, I, you know, it was unfortunate that we, we had to miss that, that special year, what turned out to be, but you know, I, I, I'm appreciative for it in hindsight for sure. Yeah, man. And I'm glad to see where we're both at right now in our lives. With 100%. playing career at Clemson, I'm at Ohio State right now and worked for numerous sports companies, started this yeah. podcast, man. It's, we're doing pretty well. My guy, my guy, Jeff's killing it, man. My guy, you know, my name's she- Jeff. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. Oh, yeah. man. Well, that's good times, man. How's, how's yeah. everybody doing? Uh, how's Julie? She's good, you know. She's uh, you know, she's working. She's a working woman, so, so uh, you know, she's providing for me while I'm, you know, I'm on my grind still. So, uh, <laughs> you know, <laughs> hopefully get to return the favor in a couple of years. But you know, <laughs> yeah, it is what it is. Yeah, man. You been to the lake at all? Uh, yeah. We uh, we had the O line. Uh, we all went out there last weekend to kind of do some O line bonding stuff. Uh, so it was good, you know. Try to try to get out there and you know get away for a little bit oh yeah it's so nice bro i can't believe it but man that's so great bro i'm so glad to hear that you're doing well yeah man dude like i said i appreciate you having me on you know you know like i said i was just waiting for that call so you know man you ready. knew it was coming you knew it was coming <laughs> Facts, facts. <laughs> yeah, I was messing. yeah man but yeah. Ooh, i'm excited for you bro this is about to be a good year for you guys and like it's just gonna yeah, be crazy because like Y'all are – it's like the SEC and the ACC, and, like, those are, like, the big two right now. Yeah, you know, it's uh, – I mean, if you look at the past, I don't know how many years, six years, five years, something like that, uh, it's been those two conferences. So, uh, and then, obviously, Ohio State was before that. So, yeah, um, you know. Hey, don't leave us out. I know you yeah. I know you beat us. I know you beat us. But, yeah, all right, don't, don't forget about us now. We still Yeah, got- you know, the OG, the OG playoff winners. Yeah, you know, that – can we just take a moment to recognize that team with Zeke? Oh my was, goodness, was fire, bro. Zeke, who they they had Zeke, Devin Smith, Michael Thomas. Like I can't even like I'm don't even know the rest of the people. Even but. even the O linemen on that team were disgusting. Like Billy Price, Elfline, oh. Taylor Decker, the quarterbacks, third string quarterback, Cardell 12 Jones, games, twelve games, yes sir. <laughs> <laughs> man that team was crazy for real but bro i don't know like i'm looking at that team and i'm looking at you guys team what was it last year i think it was last year you guys went the perfect season like bro i don't know those teams are like if i would love to see them if in some way they guys like all of you guys just got together straight up played that team. game like that would have been whew, that would have been back and Facts. forth that would have been back and forth no nah, i know man that's what you know that's what it's all about, though. You know, you get the best teams you can and compete and see who's, who comes out on top, so. Yeah, man. Well, Matt, thank you so much for coming on, brother. Dude, Jeff, I appreciate it. Much love as always. You know, keep doing your thing. I know you're going to do it, so uh, I, I appreciate it for real, man. You're my guy. 